Hey everybody and welcome back to the Pennsylvania and Barrowin. This is episode number 10. It has been quite a while since episode number 9. I do apologize. I feel like I've been saying that quite often. I do. I do feel bad. Uh, since episode 9, I have done a few live streams though in lieu of shooting uh, some videos. Uh, we did two live streams on the Pennsylvania and Berwyn, and we did one on Needles. Uh, on the PNB, we worked mostly around Mill Creek and uh, Junietta Yard. And uh, Needles, we, we uh, finished up the route, and uh, actually right now it is just in testing, so hopefully that'll be out to you guys soon. Uh, if you happen to miss those streams, they are available in my appropriate playlists on my channel here. Uh, the Needles one obviously will be in the Needles live stream, or in the, in the Needles uh, playlists, and the PNB live streams will be in the PNB playlists. If you would like to join us for future live streams, there will be more in the future, uh, different times. I don't have a schedule for them, it's just kind of as I have time, because uh, there will be more. Um, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, and if you are already subscribed to my channel or you're just subscribing now, make sure you hit the bell icon right next to or above or below uh, that subscribe button. That will give you an alert when I go live. Um, if you do not see that bell icon, you can also uh, make sure you follow me on uh, social media. I do a social media blast the day before and the day of uh, to alert everybody that I will be doing a live stream. So you can follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, or Instagram, and uh, you'll get a notification when I go live. All right, what are we doing here? What are we doing today? I wanted to take a break from Mill Creek because honestly, I'm getting kind of burned out from that area and I wanted to do something a little bit different. We've been spending a lot of time there on the last few videos as well as the live streams. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and uh, I wanted to revisit Vani. So here we are, we're back at Vani and what we're looking at here is the spur. Uh, it's an abandoned spur behind Eureka. And uh, this is the spur that uh, it, it dead ends, um, but the uh, locals need to use this spur to actually get into the facing point or would it be a trailing point uh, spur for uh, Eureka? Yeah, it's a trailing point uh, industry. So they have to come down this abandoned um, this abandoned track here and uh, and then reverse back into Eureka to drop off their boxcar loads. Uh, so right here is just behind Eureka. Um, in fact, right on uh, the bottom edge of the screen would be the uh, would be the uh, junction for it. Um, and then going further to the top is heading out to an abandoned uh, abandoned mine. And um, I thought that this was a really great feature that added some story to the PNB, and uh, this is something that Bill included originally, and I really liked that. I like that idea that not every industry here is, is still active, so there's still some history to to the route. Um, so I wanted to keep that, and uh, this uh, this particular spur I think goes back about a quarter mile or a half a mile. Um, we're gonna work our way down that way um, as the as the video progresses, but uh, I wanted to do some detail work back there and. Um, I've been kind of craving doing some abandoned sort of overgrown trackage and, and that sort of thing So that's why I chose this for this episode And also I wanted to add in um, this scene here that we're looking at with this uh, bridge going over this creek um, I've been wanting to add it just kind of somewhere. I didn't necessarily have it planned um, For this location, but it seems to work out really really well And I like that the uh, the end of track is right on the other side of the bridge um, which means that the engines that are switching Eureka have to stop on the uh, on the bridge and then and then reverse direction So I thought that that was really neat and it, it makes for some pretty cool photo ops. So uh, I liked that um, And what I what I did to get this effect here is I found a spline um, I think it's a it's a river spline if you look in the bottom right You'll see the the Kuid numbers and you can pause the video when I'm using it, but uh, what it is it's a water spline um, Because one of the problems with with water in this game is that you can't like manipulate it on an angle. It, it moves up and down vertically um, as if it's like a physical asset. So you can't uh, do a, uh, a flowing stream, so to speak, that kind of comes down a gradient. So what you have to do is uh, you have to fake it somehow. You could either um, use the regular water and make your stream completely flat and level, which I don't think is very realistic. Um, or you can use one of these splines, and uh, the splines allow you to go on a gradient and, uh, and get a little bit more dimension to your streams. Um, you just have to be careful with how you blend it into the rest of the scenery um, in terms of its height. Like, if you if you look, uh, I don't know if it's coming up or if we already passed it, where the spline goes into the rest of the river, um, there's kind of a hard edge there, and I'm going to have to disguise that probably with some rocks and some, um, some vegetation or something like that. But if you do a good job blending it, um, 
the effect is really good. Or you can just use all splines for your water. I, that might even be a better idea, and then you don't even have to worry about it. Um, and I might even change this water off to the right to, to the spline, um, because it does look a lot better. It looks more realistic. It doesn't move and ripple, and I don't know if it has reflection either, but it, the effect is there once you cover it up with some grass and throw some rocks and stuff in there. The effect is really good. Anyway, uh, so what I'm doing here is, uh, this, at the top of the screen there, is the abandoned mineshaft. And, um, what I'm trying to do is get a, get a, an abandoned road. Not just the railroad, but an abandoned road to go back there. So, I'm kind of mapping out with, um, the Ashoto roads, and actually I think this might be a, uh, the Yarnish roads. Or, no, those are, that's an Ashoto road. It's hard for me to tell on this little preview that I'm watching, uh, watching my video back on while I do the, uh, do this voiceover. Um, but obviously I don't want traffic on there, so what I end up doing is just deleting it. Um, I couldn't find, like, a good, adequate road, uh, that had no traffic on it. I don't know why I'm having a hard time with that, but for some reason I couldn't find a good road with no, no, no traffic. So, in order to get the effect of, uh, an abandoned road, what you'll see in just a moment here is that I lay the road down, lay down some texturing underneath it so that I have the path of the road, and then I de delete the road spline itself. Um, obviously, I do that after I've added the details, the roadside details, like the crossing gates that I'm putting in here, um, and any other signs and details like that. So I can make sure that everything is exactly in the right place without having to guess. But the effect that I achieve is that this looks like a road that hasn't been used in a long time. It's starting to crumble and and uh, and just turn into just like a, a gravel road almost. Um, I, I remember seeing this uh, as a kid in where I grew up. There was a uh, an abandoned railroad spur. Actually, it was part of the Ulstern Delaware Railroad where my uh, my grandfather used to operate to. And um, it was a spur that was still in operation up into the 80s, um, I believe. And um, it went out to a cement plant. And a uh, very similar kind of look. The cement plant was abandoned in the uh, in the 80s. And uh, I remember going out there as a kid with my dad for whatever reason. He just wanted to take me out there. And uh, we had to go down this sort of abandoned road that was closed off like this. But the road was still beat to crap for some reason. It was just like... You could tell it used to be an asphalt road, but all that was left was just gravel. So that was kind of a cool effect. Uh, so I was trying to recreate that here, and I, I think the effect is there. We'll take a look at it in live mode. Um, so I liked that a lot. Um, what I'm doing here is starting to scenic around the tracks. Uh, obviously, this is a, a very important part, otherwise there, there's no effect. Um, I wanted it to look like it's been a really, really long time since uh, any trains have gone down this spur. So I, I really made sure I, I grew some of the trees, or I planted some of the trees as close as I could to the tracks without actually putting them on the tracks. Um, you'll see a lot of times that it doesn't take very long after a railroad has been abandoned or a, a, a spur has been out of service for trees to shoot up and grow very, very rapidly. I mean, they're not full-grown trees, but they will sprout up very quickly and, and be right almost on top of the railheads. Um, so I was trying to get that kind of look, and uh, I'll get there in just a minute. And I did a lot of that with uh, copying and pasting and rotating assets and stuff. And one of you guys uh, pointed out a really nifty trick to me, actually. Um, when you're copying and pasting, if you hold down uh, the left mouse button when you're going to paste, it'll give you a preview um, of what you're gonna, what you're placing. So you can kind of drag it around a little tiny bit without um, placing anything and just see what it looks like. But as soon as you lift your finger up off of the mouse button, um, it will place it. So like, there's no canceling it. You have to undo it after you release your finger if, if you don't like it. Um, but that is a, a really handy tip that, that uh, I can't remember which one of you pointed out to me, so I apologize. Um, but th that worked out really great. I've been using that a lot. Another thing I'd like to point out to you guys is um, I'm starting to use, and I talked about this in my live stream, and I kind of did a live stream in between when I filmed this episode, uh, the first part of this episode and this voiceover. It's kind of kind of weird. But uh, anyway, uh, I I've been starting to implement some new trees and some higher resolution track and stuff like that into the route. So you'll see I'm going to plant some uh, some speed trees, and I'm going to use them in very sparing quantities because I know that they're just frame rate killers. And, for, you know, it's not that important to have a speed tree in the background. So I'm only going to use them for anything that's kind of really close to the tracks um, or requires a, a nicely detailed tree. Um, I found some of these nice ones here. I think they're... I can't read what, it, what the... The name of it is but you'll see it on the screen there st maybe um something it's some really obscure crazy name that whoever made them came up with but they look really great um they don't jiggle around too much like some of the, <laughs> the built-in speed trees do um they they're not too like rubber bandy uh so i liked that about them and the details are, are pretty good too so i'll be sprinkling those in here and there 
um, as well as some uh, some more updated track. It's been really hard for me to make that transition into new assets because this route is so big and I've been working on it for so long that if I make a change, like to the tracks for example, then, you know, I have to go back and either adjust the track height or adjust, adjust the, uh, the ballast color. You know, I, I've pretty much committed myself to the assets that I'm using at this point, so changing them is going to be like a real challenge. And I don't want to change too much because then that's going to set me back. And the more time I have to go back and redo stuff, the more time it's going to take for me to actually get this route out to you guys. Um, so what we're seeing here is, uh, is I'm using some scenery to cover up the, the edge of that, uh, that uh, river spline there. Uh, trying to sprinkle some some grass and vegetation down in the water as well as these rocks to kind of give a, a little bit more of a overgrown effect. I mean, a lot of these streams aren't just like, you know, a transition from water to dirt. There's usually some kind of vegetation there. There's some rocks. I actually want to add some more rocks because I, I don't think that I have enough. Um, I wanted it to look pretty, pretty rocky and mountainous. I mean... Um, Pennsylvania, the, the Poconos, the Catskills, that's, the Poconos is kind of like the lower Catskills, so the, the geography is pretty much, is pretty similar, um, and, and a lot of that geography is uh, glacial and uh, also sedimentary, so you see a lot of boulders and ancient stream beds and, and uh, uh, stuff like that all over the place, so it's going to be kind of important to include that in there to get the effect that this is a uh, northeastern route and does take place in, uh, in Pennsylvania or um, in the Poconos region, you know, any, anywhere sort of around there. Um, so now we're getting into the actual mineshaft area, and uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I did do a, a kind of heavy copying and pasting to, to keep things moving along. Um, but again, here I am putting down some asphalt. I found this really nice asphalt texture that's built in. Um, that's got some like tar marks on it, and it's like really broken up. I used it at the gas station in the beginning. You'll, you, you can go back and take a look. Um, but it is super, super nice to, uh, to add. It's got some, like, worn effects to it and some manholes and stuff like that. So there's a couple different options for it. And, uh, I think it looks really great. And, uh, I was using that here to, again, give that sort of busted up old parking lot sort of look. Um, and the, the, uh, the, I think the look was achieved using that as well as some, uh, some grasses and shrubs and stuff like that. And if you didn't notice, I also adjusted the, the fence height and uh, kind of twisted it up a little tiny bit so that it looked a little um, run down, maybe it's sinking into the ground, maybe some, some truck or some kids, you know, backed into it with a car or a four-wheeler or something like that. So it looks a little bit more run down. Um, and of course, I got to add some of these, uh, I can't even remember the name of this plant, but I see it all over the place in the summertime. Uh, grows up throughout like all the old railroad tracks, ties and all that kind of stuff. So I had to add some of that. Um, looks super great. Uh, Alright, so we're coming up to the end of the time lapse here. I'm gonna let it run out and then we'll jump into live mode. Alright guys, here we are at the completed scene here on the abandoned siding, going out to the abandoned mine shaft. Uh, I definitely really like the way that this looks. This is not totally complete, it's still a work in progress as is a lot of this route, but you know what, it, it is on the right track. I ran out of time, so this is where I had to stop, um, but you know what, it looks pretty cool. It's still pretty good for screenshots, and I'm happy with it. I just gotta do some work back here along the stream. Um, and I guess kind of connect it to uh, wherever it's actually going to go to back here. So I got to do a little bit of work there um, and decide where I want this road to go back this way as well. So still a little tiny bit of work. Uh, let's take a look at what this asset is really quickly as my mouse dies. Of course, I'm still using a wireless mouse. Batteries are dying. Uh, so let's see. This is River Spline Muddy Water. All right, so if you guys want to use that, that is the uh, the asset. Um, there is the code QID on the bottom right there. Um, I think it blends in pretty decently. Uh, if you can if you can get it to the right level, I think this is believe it or not actually the same level as the water. If not, it actually might be a little bit underneath it. Um, but I will blend this in. I'll probably move the spline back a little bit, add some more 
uh, grass texture and, and rocks and, and that sort of thing. But it's got a pretty nice effect to it. Um, I could even m maybe bring in some more of the uh, the built-in water up into this way a little bit to, to mix it a little tiny bit. Um, I don't mind that they're two different colors because this is probably runoff water and runoff water tends to be kind of muddy and silty and, um, you know, this is a, a bigger body of water, so it might be a little bit more clear. Um, but yeah, so I got some more work to do through here. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I thought I added some crossings in here, but I guess... I guess maybe I didn't, maybe it was just this one. Um, but we could take a closer look at some of the details that I tossed in here. We got the railroad crossing sign, some of the busted up concrete and cement. Um, I also took some time to bury the tracks a little tiny bit, uh, just to add to the idea that it's been a really, really long time since anything has been back this way. So actually, let me just, oh, okay. I thought I could maybe, this is like an SP2 thing. Once you zoom in, like you can only, go from all the way wide to all the way telephoto. So I guess uh, I can't go back to the normal view, but that's okay, we'll just look at it like this. Um, again, these are some of the newer speed trees that, uh, that I picked out. Um, let's take a look at what these are called since I couldn't recall that in the, in the uh, time lapse. Uh, nope, that's grassy. Oh, you know what, they're in my pick list over here. STRMM blah, 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 blah. However, that is supposed to make sense, but somehow, that makes sense to somebody. I guess they maybe speed tree. Maybe that's the person's name. I, I really have no idea. It makes sense to somebody out there. Um, but again, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I do have to do uh, a little bit more scenicing back here. I'm not going to get too concerned with what this looks like back here. Um, mostly because it's so far away from where the viewer is going to be. Um, this is just kind of like a bonus scene, I guess you can call it. Uh, just to add a, like, a little bit more history to the PNB and um, a little bit more life to it. Again, here's another one of these trees. Um, they look really, really nice. I, I, I've come to the, the conclusion that the reason I don't like a lot of speed trees is because they look lumpy. And these don't look lumpy. Like Some of the built-in ones just look like big old things like cotton candy and then they're like all rubbery. This one's kind of swaying a little bit, but it's not too bad. These are really nice. Um, and again, these ground textures that I was telling you about, um, I believe these are built in because I recognize uh, the creator's name, uh, Tume, I believe. Uh, Tume Street 105. So these are pretty cool. They have the uh, cracked asphalt and um, these uh, nice manhole covers and stuff like that. It's perfect, absolutely perfect for a gas station because gas stations have all these vents and places for the, uh, the, the gas trucks to uh, dump everything off or unload it or whatever. So uh, this scene is coming together pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. We do have a lot more work until uh, Vani is complete, and then I feel good about uh, actually releasing it. Um, oh, here's, I guess I'll just give you a little bit of context to where this is. Uh, so this is Eureka right here. Uh, so this is the spur. Uh, trains need to come in. This would be up towards the top, coming from uh, Junietti Yard and Old Town and all that. So trains would be coming in this way. Um, in order to drop off any loads or pick up any loads or empties um, at this spur here, you have to go down, pull up past the gas station to, I guess you probably don't, you wouldn't have to go quite as far as uh, as I have it set up here. I guess maybe if you had three boxcars, but I don't think, I don't think this siding is big enough to accommodate three boxcars. So uh, it's just, it's just nice to have that extra room. Maybe if there was two locomotives on here. Um, you know, whatever. It looks cool. I like it. That's that's all that matters is that it looks cool. It's starting to feel like a real place, and uh, and I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and lastly, what I want to do uh, to close out this episode is uh, at the last at the end of my last episode, I uh, I um what do you, what what's the I dedicated that's the word I dedicated a uh, few places to some subscriber or to uh, some donators, and uh, Mike Atterbury he uh, or Mark excuse me Mark Atterbury. Uh, messaged me back and he asked if instead of the the warehouse that I that I dedicated if I can dedicate this baseball park to him he said he uh, worked for the Santa Rose Fire Department for 28 years and his nickname was Attaboy Atterbury uh, I guess they must have played a lot of baseball together so uh, he asked if I could title this Attaboy Park so that's what we will do um, real quickly to close this out and uh, I guess I will just name the, the baseball field itself would be the way to go, yeah. So, 
So there we go, Attaboy Park. So once again, thanks a lot, Mark Atterbury, uh, for the uh, very generous donation. Um, and uh, actually, you know what? Let's name let's name this as well. So we have this on here twice. All right. So that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, I do apologize for the lack of content. I'm still getting settled in. And uh, I'll be back to the normal swing of things hopefully pretty soon. I I I'm expecting it to be pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, take a look back at those live streams that I've done. And, uh, and keep your eye out for future live streams because uh, I do have more planned, I guess, so to speak. Um, since my time is limited, these videos do take a tremendous amount of my time to, to put together. Um, so live streaming is just a good way for me to connect with you guys and chat one-on-one. -on -one, and uh, you guys get to chat with each other, which is really cool. I've, I've seen a lot of that in the chat. So uh, hop on when I do a live stream and we'll hang out for a bit and have a, have a good time. Uh, Alright, well, thanks for watching guys. Leave a comment and all that below. I'll see you next time.